Let him feel the power of Maharashtra. Come on! Leaders are now on the dais. Please welcome His Holiness Dalai Lama, Yog Rishi Baba Ramdev, Jain Acharya Kulchandra Ji Maharaj, Jain Acharya Namra Muni Ji Maharaj. Respected elder spiritual brothers, uh, no sister. <laughs> and rest of brothers, sisters. Indeed, I'm very, very happy to participate this wonderful meeting. Firstly, uh, see these spiritual leaders not only they carry their practice thousand year old tradition seriously, but also they are quite active. Uh, so helping where some problem they are helping try to solve through non-violent way. So I very much appreciate. Somet sometimes we uh, spiritual practitioner you see the idea vision very good but sometimes a little lacking actual action. So now these, my brothers, really very, very active. So I very much appreciate. Now, my usual sort of, what's the day, thinking, wherever I go, talk, number one, I consider myself as a one of the seven billion human beings. Entire seven billion human beings, mentally, emotionally, even physically, basically the same. Like some of these the spiritual brothers, a lot of hair here. <laughs> <laughs> Me, none. <laughs> so these are minor differences. Basically, we are same. Physically also, same. Now, important is, entire seven billion human beings uh, want happiness, joyfulness, Nobody wants problem. However, a lot of problems which we are facing, east, west, south, north, most of these problems, except problems due to nature disaster, uh, and also is it due to uh, global warming. Some nature disaster uh, happened. But many of the problems which we are facing is our own creation. Uh, so now, here, big contradiction. Nobody wants a problem but ourselves. You see, creating a lot of problems. How? Here, our emotion. Among the emotion, there are positive emotions, destructive emotions. 
most of these problems, man-made problems. I think I, I, sometimes I, I is mentioning, you see, man-made, that means female, not because of the creating problem. No, no. But at least now here, only men, so I can say man-made problem. <laughs> Most of the problem, actually our own creation. With too much destructive emotion, anger, uh, and jealousy. This related with feeling of self-centered attitude. Just think of oneself. Regardless uh, what what cause of the effect to other. Sometimes you see too much self-centered attitude. Then fear comes. Fear creates uh, irritation. Irritation creates anger. Anger creates violence. So now, time comes. Uh, so when we talk peace, peace must achieve through inner peace. So now, violence related with anger. Peace related with compassion. Where genuine compassion there, non-violence come. So this country, thousand years, the concept of ahimsa. Ahimsa generally on the level of action. Now any genuine non-violent action, ahimsa action related with karuna, where karuna there, your verbal action, physical action, even mental action become non-violence. Too much self-centered attitude here. Uh, then outwardly looks non-violence, but for example, with self-centered attitude, try to cheat other people and use some nice word and artificial smile and sometimes some gift looks non-violence but because of their motivation try to cheat them so it's essentially violence now a sensible good mother or teacher, including my own teacher, when I study, see, I was quite a lazy student. So occasionally my teacher showing me little sort of harsh attitude. But that, out of sense of concern of my study, my well-being, so this little bit of harsh attitude is actually non-violent. So demarcation, violence and non-violence entirely depend on the motivation. Now when we talk ahimsa, we must pay more attention about karuna. Now here, over 30 years, I have several sort of uh, discussions with, with scientists, mainly cosmology, uh, neurobiology, and then physics, particularly quantum physics, uh, then psychology. So then, some occasion, now scientists, they say, basic human nature is more compassionate. They have sort of a lot of reasons to describe human basic nature is more compassionate. Now, for example, one occasion, 
I also participate uh, in the discussion. So one picture, cartoon picture, you see, one picture, you see, two young children helping each other with smile. When that cartoon show to one infant child, six months old, language not yet developed, I saw, you see, when that cartoon show or seeing by the uh, infant smiling, uh, uh, that infant uh, enjoy the uh, action of love, showing affection. Then another cartoon, you see two children, negative attitude, one another. That picture, you see, showing to that infant child. Oh, child, also, you see, looking, unhappiness, re resentment, something like that. Then, of course, most important, constant anger develop, fear develop, actually eating our immune system. Whereas more compassionate feeling there, your health will be good. So healthy body, healthy mind, very close. Then, our common experience, seven billion human beings come from their own matter. And of course, uh, again scientists, they say, after born, after birth, born, next few weeks, simply mother's physical touch is key factor for proper enlarging brain. So that's our life start, including those troublemakers now out of seven billion human beings. These also come from their mother. So in their blood, uh, the appreciation of love is there. So anyone who appreciates where love, they Naturally, you see, they, I said, they, they cherish love and all have the seed of compassion. So, from scientific finding and our common experience, then common sense, if we stay together here, uh, in deep insight, little jealousy then we won't have, we, we won't be happy. <laughs> Sit together, open heart, and consider other spiritual brothers, sisters, uh, and deal with other people honestly, truthfully, compassionately. We, everybody get immense benefit. So your neighbor may be very rich, Maybe be millionaire, uh, but in the family, even husband and wife, little jealousy, a little suspicion. <laughs> uh, that, that family never be happy. And the poor, even beggar, full of trust among their sort of family member. Poor meal, accommodation, but to feel very happy. So therefore, these are our common sense. Now, use our uh, common experience and uh, uh, and then scientific finding. I feel when I heard 
basic human nature is more compassionate. And I, I really felt now there is hope. Uh, now the problem, existing education system, is a so-called modern education. India, this country also, you see, modern education come from West. I really feel uh, at the time the India get independence, I think education, uh, I think should involve some uh, knowledgeable sort of Indian who have the ancient Indian knowledge. If that takes place, then modern India could be a little different. Now, because, you know, the existing modern education system is very much oriented about material value, not talking about our inner value. When inner value comes, we totally rely on religious, as I say, uh, religious faith or religious belief. Now, today, out of seven billion human beings, around one billion non-believer, and then also among the six billion believer, also there are some strange believer also there. <laughs> they just claim themselves as a follower of this religion, that religion. But day-to-day -day life, not very serious about the teaching of religion. So this, I feel, uh, due to lack of education about our inner value. So now here, India have, I feel, great potential. Plus, modern education, you must pay more attention about ancient your knowledge, about the human mind, about the human emotion, then how to tackle this emotion. That's part of ancient Indian knowledge. So, India can, can combine modern education, the modern technology, the modern material development, plus education about our inner value, such as Karuna. Uh, not just relying on religious faith, but use our common sense, as I mentioned earlier. So from kindergarten level, up to university level, I think eventually uh, the in education field should include education about our inner value. So that existing material, material oriented, material oriented sort of education uh, bring us physical comfort. Uh, then ancient Indian knowledge about mind, about inner world, that brings inner peace, inner value. So therefore, now last few years, uh, with help of some Indian uh, scholars and also many scientists, including European American scientists, uh, we fully now engage how to introduce in modern education field about education, about our inner value. Strictly, again, Indian, Indian tradition, secular way, not based on religion, but the use of, as I mentioned earlier, common sense of these things. So India's constitution itself, uh, very much based on secular. So according to Indian understanding, secular means not only respect all religions, but also respect non-believer. So 
the according to that sort of concept, it can cover entire seven billion human beings, including those one billion non-believer. So, I think one is the India introduce education system, which combination modern education uh, and ancient Indian sort of knowledge or education about inner world, then I think India really uh, can make, I think, significant contribution for well-being of the seven billion human beings. Then your neighbor, China, people from China, traditionally Buddhist country. Now today, China, around 400 million Buddhist population there. Many of these Chinese Buddhists now really showing interest about Tibetan Buddhism. Tibetan Buddhism is true lineage of Nalanda tradition. So like that, so once uh, one of India's religion, that is Buddhism, I think cover whole Asia, like that. So, so India, I think, can make certain, if it's China, you see, showing interest about, you see, uh, India's, I'll say, the newly developed some kind of education, combination, modern education, and ancient Indian sort of knowledge about mind, about emotion. Then, I think, combine India and China, over two billions, almost two and a half billions. Uh, so that could be some significance for well-being of seven billion hum as a hum human being, like that. So, so now, as a human being, we are social animal. And the modern time, the modern global economy, no national boundary. And the basic human value, these are cover entire seven million human beings. So therefore, as a human being, one of the human beings, in order to bring a peaceful world, uh, in order to reduce this man-made problem, now uh, we have to make effort to promote sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. I think uh, through education and use our common sense properly, we can educate from kindergarten up to university level. So this is my number one commitment. Number two commitment, I am a believer. I am Buddhist, and particularly a follower of Nalanda tradition, Sanskrit tradition. So, uh, then now spent 58 years in this country, I fully convinced now, religious harmony is very possible. Now, in this country, besides homegrown religion, that is Sangya philosophy, and Jain philosophy, and then Buddhist philosophy, and later Sikhism, these are homegrown different religious traditions. Then, beside that, from our side, Zorazodin. And then Judaism, Christianity, Islam come from outside. But equally enjoy now in this country. Now, today, India, I think, where all world major religious traditions live together, 
occasionally some problem. <laughs> That's understandable. I usually say telling the over one billion Indian, not a Buddhist Adwa. <laughs> some mischievous people must be there. <laughs> so some problem occasionally here and there, but overall picture of this country, I think religious harmony, not a political reason, but over a thousand years. That tradition is, I think, a very strong India's tradition. Now, uh, this, let's say, must preserve. Uh, and now, younger generation, I think this kind of meeting uh, and the, among the scholars, serious discussions and this kind of meeting from time to time, you see, should take. So the thousand-year-old uh, our tradition, from time to time, should revive, re should remind like that. So because this country, over a billion population, and India, frankly speaking, quite a complicated nation. <laughs> but inside that, religious harmony is really marvelous. So therefore, I have full conviction, oh, the rest of the world, I think religious harmony is very possible and should make effort. It is indeed unthinkable. The, besides man-made other problem, economy or political or national interest, these things, this is understandable. But religious faith also causing division and violence, unthinkable. Now in Syria, in these, some of these countries, the, between Muslim and Christian in Egypt, and some Muslim country, Syria, or here, you see Shia and Sunni. In India, almost, you see, no news, some sort of, cause of conflict between Shia and Sunni. So therefore, uh, today's world, besides, uh, besides, you see, other problem, uh, which is easily understandable, but religions also causing uh, conflict. It's really, really sad, unthinkable. All major religious tradition is a source of say, the immense inspiration over 2,000 years, and including Sangha philosophy, 3,000 years, like that. So therefore, the old major world tradition, religion of human being. So we human appreciate human love, human affection. Therefore, oh, oh, the time to go. Yes, yes, then come. Come, come, come. Go, go, go. Come. Goodbye. Thank you. Okay. Another vocation. From time to time, we will meet. <laughs>
tradition or Indian thought like that. So, so already uh, the religious harmony still very good. Now still pay more attention like that. And then thirdly, of course, as a Tibetan, uh, I have sort of uh, serious sort of or the concern, preservation of Tibetan knowledge, ancient knowledge. All knowledge comes from India. Since the 8th century, one of the top masters of Nalanda, Shantar Rakshita, he invited by Tibetan emperor, 8th century. Uh, he introduced Buddha Dharma according to Nalanda tradition. Over thousand thousand years, we kept all this knowledge. Sometimes I jokingly telling people, India itself, for example, the Nalanda tradition, the Nalanda, I think with Nalanda institution ruined now, nothing there, some pigeons there. <laughs> so similarly, this ancient knowledge about Nalanda also is much neglected. During those centuries, we Tibetan, we kept all this knowledge which introduced by Shandar Rakshita. So, so I usually describe you Indian, you Indian, traditionally our guru. We are Chela. We not only Chela, but also quite a reliable chela. <laughs> Truly. About 300 volumes of uh, text translated from India, uh, including many Nalanda masters writing. Uh, we still use this as a text, textbook. Memorize, you see, these root text, and then each word you see, explain according to Nalanda Master's commentary. And then we use extensively logic, Parmana, Dignak, Dharmakirti, and Shandarakshita himself, and Kamalashila. You see, they are writing about logic. Uh, we extensively study these things. So, therefore, we, I think it is quite Kasoda reasonable, say, reliable chela. <laughs> so, uh, then another thing, now these days, uh, I fully committed, try to revive of ancient Indian knowledge. Uh, religion, something different. In this country, is a different, many different religious traditions. But logic, and knowledge about mind or psychology, these are common. We should consider these things, you see, uh, academic subject. So I'm trying to revive of this ancient Indian knowledge in modern India. So eventually should, as I mentioned earlier, combine modern education and ancient Indian thought like that. So, as a chela of uh, Indian Guru, it is my duty to make a report. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>